Wobble baby, wobble baby, wobble baby, wobble by Vic, V I C. Okay. There's a Monty Python's Flying Circus. They had a, a sketch called the Ministry of Silly Walks, where John Cleese and Michael Pay would do these ridiculous walks. And so when I went to the neurologist to be diagnosed, he had me walk in the hallway for him. <clears throat> and I made him diagnose me with a silly walk. He said, You're you said you have a strange walk. And I said, Could you say it's silly? And he said, sure. So I made him write it down. So I have a medically diagnosed silly walk. I was a violinist growing up. I was very interested in music. <clears throat> then I went to college at William & Mary, graduated in 1996, got a degree in history. Then I went to law school at University of Richmond. I was in court and I would forget things. I would stand up to make an objection and you know nothing would come out. Then I was also clumsy. <clears throat> and I was like, you know, stumbling around and I would fall down, <clears throat> which was embarrassing. So I probably had symptoms for about 10 years, but they were very minor. And like I said, <clears throat> I was adopted. So I didn't, I, you know, nobody in my family knew about Huntington's disease. Mike and I met in college our sophomore year. We had an anthropology class together. He was very smart and creative. The club had a dance. And he showed up and uh, he was wearing a white shirt and white pants and he had a sign around his neck that he'd taken from a vending machine that said quarters only, no nickels or dimes. And it wasn't a costume party. <laughs> I just thought this is somebody who's very comfortable being himself. But I remember it was about a year before Mike was diagnosed. I was up late working in the kitchen, trying to finish all my charts for the day. And he came down and started talking to me and I realized that he was like shaking and twitching. He was upset about something, but I thought, you know, I've never seen that shaking and twitching before. And then in the back of my mind, I thought, I bet he has HD because I knew that it was a devastating disease that happened in midlife and people had uncontrollable movements. And I am a pessimist. I, that's just my natural personality. And so I think about the worst. Mostly because I didn't know because I didn't know what it was at the time, I was just kind of, uh, I just spent a bunch of time kind of uh, waiting for the test to come back, kind of hoping that my dad didn't have the disease. And it uh, turns out that the answer was, yes, he did have the disease. It's definitely different. Well, it was very stressful because I didn't know anybody with Huntington's disease. I was, you know, the only person I'd ever met. As a geneticist, I know that HD is hereditary and there's a 50% recurrence risk to each child that's born to an affected person. So almost immediately after the doctor told us that Mike had been diagnosed with HD, I started thinking about the children. While I worry a lot about what the future holds for my kids, uh, what I'm recognizing is they'll probably live a long time before they develop any symptoms. So that's been kind of a relief. And there's a 50% chance that I get it. It's the thing that I can't change. And if it happens, it happens. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let this just kind of get in the way of anything that I'm going to do. I said, uh, um, Okay, can I get tested now? I want to know if I get Huntington's because I don't, because what the only way to tell is when you're 18 and I want to wait until then. And then I was happy to find out that if I don't get Huntington's, my kids won't get Huntington's. I worry that I'm going to get stuck taking care of my children when I'm elderly because one or both of them might be affected. But neither of my kids have symptoms now. They're happy, they're healthy. We're thinking about things like college. And as a mom, I really wanna know whether my kids have HD because I think it would probably be a good idea to plan out their lives. Like, should we spend a lot of money on graduate school or not? That might be a good thing to know, but my kids are gonna make their own decisions. And I hope that we're gonna have treatments. I still see patients who uh, are gonna get tested for HD. They have to have counseling ahead of time. 
And what I say now is, you know, that if you're positive, I want you to have hope for your kids because if they're tested and they're positive, by the time that happens, there might be a cure. I'm very excited today. We got, uh, I think, gonna, some fun things to talk about uh, here from the home office in Sioux City, Iowa is top 10 benefits of having Huntington's disease. Number 10, I don't have to worry about global warming. Hallucinations help pass the time. If you act confused, you get free hugs and sometimes even ice cream. I have a good support system. And I mean, things could be worse. I could be a lot sicker than I am. You know, I'm not in any pain or anything. And so also I try to laugh about it. I went and looked around at other, you know, social media <clears throat> and mostly it's pretty grim. People, you know, there's not a lot of like people laughing and stuff. So I decided to try to be funny. I uh, like to participate in my dad's YouTube videos because it gives me something to do and I get to spend time with them. I think humor is sort of a thing that helps people come together because who doesn't like to be happy? He tries to be optimistic and he's silly and I like laughing with him and it relieves my stress. And I'm just amazed that he can continue to be a positive, optimistic person, even though he's living with HD. As a geneticist, the science that I use to treat my patients with today is science fiction compared to what it was like in medical school 20 years ago. So what I think about is, well, 20 years from now, the science of treating HD might be significantly advanced and there might be a lot more opportunity to really do something about palliating this awful disease. And that gives me some hope. It taught me that you can never take anything for granted and you have to live your life while you're living it. And, you know, we're, we are human and we can still laugh and have lives. Hang in there, it's not the end of the world, you can live with this. It's just a thing you have to deal with and, you know, it's a struggle, but you can, man you can manage it and find something to laugh about. It.